My name is Ed Green and I am an assistant professor of biomolecular engineering at University of California, Santa Cruz. And my um, research program is uh, around genome sciences. We study all kinds of interesting biological and evolutionary phenomena by sequencing, assembling, and analyzing genomes. We sequenced the genome of the Neanderthal, made a draft sequence of this back in 2010, and more recently, uh, Svante's group and a big consortium of folks have uh, published a, a finished genome, a, a finished quality genome of the Neanderthal. This has been uh, an incredibly useful reagent for understanding human evolutionary history in many ways. First of all, it lets us know how we were related to them. Uh, in great genetic detail, something that was really hard to do by only looking at the fossil and lithic record, just looking at the bones of our ancestors and their ancestors and the tools that they made. Um, opinions varied greatly on um, how much interaction there was between them and us in the past, and, and now we know that there was at least some interaction, and at least some interaction that resulted in um, uh, viable and fertile offspring hybrid individuals because we see the genomes of or the the genes of Neanderthals in many people um, throughout the world today people uh, whose ancestry goes back uh, anywhere in Eurasia and even the New World have a few percent of their genes came not from this group of, of people in Africa that evolved into humans but instead to the group of people who are living uh, at the same time in uh, in Eurasia, the Neanderthals, who are um, uh, known from the fossil record. We got DNA out of their bones and we see that that DNA can be found in people today. The legacy of Neanderthal ancestry is mostly in people of European, Asian, and New World ancestry. The kind of best model that we have now is that when humans evolved into what we know today as humans, anatomically and behaviorally modern humans, this happened in East Africa something around 100,000 years ago. Very quickly, that group replaced all the other groups within Africa and soon after migrated, uh, dispersed out of Africa, and within a pretty short time replaced all the other archaic groups in the rest of the world. Early on, this group of new humans came into the territory of Neanderthals and interbred with them, admixed with them. Then the descendants of this population spread throughout Asia and Europe, went uh, into the islands of Southeast Asia, eventually crossed the, the Bering Land Bridge and came to the New World, and everywhere they went in Eurasia and the New World brought with them Neanderthal genes, so that we see this in people today of ancestry of those regions. My group is taking a lot of the lessons that we have learned from ancient DNA, recovering DNA from extremely old specimens, um, extracting the DNA material, sequencing it, and analyzing it. We're applying some of this to now the field of forensics. And it's a, an exciting time to be doing this because the, the uh, technology for sequencing DNA is getting so fast and so cheap. And um, there's a lot of mileage in this. A lot of the uh, computational algorithms that we use for making sense of ancient DNA can be recycled and used in the field of forensics to ask what is the information that we have from human remains in a forensic setting that we have um, basically um, uh, uh, refined and developed for ancient DNA.